Welcome to the online workshop, Paper Presence, where we will go over how to craft the perfect winning resume to suit all of your needs. A resume is a tool you can use to market yourself and what you are capable of. This document should highlight your skills, experiences, and education. Some reasons you may use a resume are for applying to part or full-time jobs, internships, or school admissions. Most importantly, it is vital to remember that a resume is not the means in which you will achieve admittance into any of these opportunities. A resume is merely getting your foot in the door to lead you to an interview. Starting a resume is as easy as brainstorming. Keeping a master copy of all your experiences allows you to create your tailored document to highlight the experiences tailored to that job you're applying for. There's no one way to create a resume. Everyone's resume is going to be different in terms of structure, format, and content. You want to think of it as a brochure about yourself. Ultimately, ask yourself, what do you want an employer to know about you? There are areas in the format of your resume where you have a little bit of wiggle room to manipulate your information to fit where you need it to. In general, a resume has margins of one inch all the way around the paper. Although this is the case, you can have margins, as long as they are the same size, that range from a half of an inch to an inch. Also, generally we reserve the right side of the paper to place dates. Dates can be right aligned to utilize all the space you have on a page, as well as enabling them to be found quickly. Lastly, you can pick a font size between 10 and 12 point font. Make sure the font you are using on your resume is an easy to read font. A lot of students choose 11 point font as it isn't too small to read, but it isn't so big you won't have room on your resume for more information you may need to include. When employers are reading over resumes, they are reading the document from top to bottom. So to ensure the employer sees the most relevant and recent information, you want to ensure that each section is placed in reverse chronological order, meaning your most recent experiences at the top. Additionally, you want to highlight your most important sections towards the top as well. You want to make sure that you order the sections on your resume in a way that will benefit you the most for the opportunity you are seeking. Listed here are some typical content headers for a resume. The heading and education section are always included on a resume, but the other sections on your resume can be tailored to the opportunity you are looking for as well as what you value. The first section you will have is your heading. Your heading will include all of your content information. The first being your name. The name should be the largest piece of text on your resume, anywhere between a 14 and 20 point font. Next will come your address. You want to ensure that if you decide to put both your permanent and current, that each are listed as permanent and current. Your phone number should be highlighted in your resume so employers can get in contact with you. And an email address. We say you can utilize your student email address since it's the most professional email address given to you, or utilize a personal one that highlights your name. Lastly, you'll see a website. The website is optional. You do not have to have it on your resume. But you want to ask yourself, does it make sense to have a website listed on your resume? Refer back to your industry and what's most prominent. Ensure that if you do decide to list a website, that the information is relevant and professional and easy to navigate. The next section you may see on your resume is the objective section. We have a 50-50 rule when it comes to how employers feel about an objective statement. 50% of the employers want to see an objective statement if the objective statement is tailored specifically to the opportunity you are applying for. 50% of employers don't want to see an objective at all. So, we tell our students that if you're going to use an objective statement, make it specific to the position you are trying to achieve. If you are creating a resume for a career fair of any sorts, there is no need to use an objective if you don't have enough room for more important information. Your next section will highlight your education. Your education will include institutions of which you are currently attending or have obtained a degree from. You will list your degree by spelling it out. You will not abbreviate on your resume what your degree is in, your graduation date, your institution, 
where your institution is located, and any minor concentration or emphasis areas you may have. Additionally, you can list your GPA on your resume. You want to ensure that you label it as either overall or major. You can have either, but you cannot have both on your resume. Lastly, ensure you define your grading scale of 4.0. The experience section of your resume is the meat of your resume. You will want to include the experiences that make you stand out as well as including those experiences that highlight why you should obtain the position you are striving for. Above you can see some examples of where experiences can come from. These experiences can range from a part-time job, internships, volunteering, or any leadership roles that make you stick out to an employer or admissions council. When you create your experience section, you will want to include your position or title of the event you completed dates where you were in that position, the organization you worked with, and the location in which you worked. This information will be listed together and underneath this information, bullets are generally used to elaborate on these events. Students need more specific and concise information on their resumes about their roles at previous jobs or internships. This is a direct quote from a recruiter at Clemson University that hires Clemson students. This shows the importance of developing your experience sections and highlighting what you did in those experiences. In the following slide, you will see how to structure those experiences and strategically utilize verbiage to highlight your proactiveness in those roles. The bullet statement you choose to write for your experience should be a one to two line statement that describes your skills, responsibilities you've held, or any additional experience related to the position you are pursuing. Always begin your bullet points with an action verb. If you are currently in a job, you will want to make that action verb present tense. If you have completed an experience, you will use a past tense action verb to speak about your experience. Related experiences can have between two to five bullet points to completely showcase your achievements. Other experiences can have around two to three bullet points to show in your involvements. Here, you can also see an example of how an experience will be listed on your resume. Next come your special sections, which are normally directly related to the objective statement or the job you're applying to. Popular sections may include, but not limited to, summary of qualifications, your technical skills, your language competencies, or your related coursework. To list these sections and to format them on your resume, follow the example on this slide. Many students include an honors, awards, and or activity section on their resume. Depending on what you are involved in, these sections may be different than other resumes. Students include extracurricular activities they are involved in, professional organizations they are a part of, leadership roles they hold, or scholarships they have obtained. If you have held leadership roles within your extracurricular activities, include them in this section. If you have obtained scholarships and list them on your resume, Make sure you include information on why you have achieved these scholarships, especially if the scholarship is named after someone. You want whoever is looking at your resume to have a complete understanding of you while looking at this marketing tool you have given them. A few items to remember. Your document should be tailored and targeted to the job that you're applying for. It should reflect positively your skills and abilities. If you're pursuing a bachelor's degree, your document will be one page, master's degree, two pages, and a PhD, three pages. Ensure your dates are aligned to the right for easy finding, and avoid using personal information such as religious or political preferences. When crafting your resume, utilize the job description or position description to pull buzzwords to include in your resume. Keep your resume concise. When possible, use quantifiers like numbers, percentages, or dollars to give a value to your experiences. Lastly, once in college, avoid any information from high school. Use your college experiences to highlight who you are. Students need resume revisions. This is a direct quote from a recruiter hiring Clemson students. This shows the importance of having your document reviewed before you finalize it. Ask yourself, is it appealing to the eye? Is it consistent? Did you check spelling, grammar, and content? And is the information complete and relative? To aid in this process, 
Utilize your network of faculty, advisors, and peers to provide you some feedback, as well as career counselors at the Career Center. You can visit our website for more information about what the Center for Career and Professional Development can offer to you. And you can come visit us to get resource handouts as well as resume critiques. Our website is career.clemson.edu and our resource center phone number is 864-656-0440. The Flora M. Riley Career Resource Center is located on the third floor of Hendricks Student Center. Students can come in during our drop-in hours, which are Monday through Friday, 1.30 to 3.45 in the afternoon. Students have the opportunity to work with a career counselor for 10 to 15 minutes on topics such as resume critiques, cover letter critiques, job searching assistance, or any quick questions they need answered. Appointments occur Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., and 1.30 to 4 in the afternoon. Topics may include mock interviews, personal statement reviews, or any other services that they need help with. At the Center for Career and Professional Development, we believe every student has a unique identity and we recognize you may have specific career-related questions and or concerns. Please come in for a drop-in or appointment so we can assist you.